Boom. 그게 아나스타샤의 설계도라는 걸 어떻게 증명할 거지? 
and the Keeler wins. Blackjack is usually a one-on-one -on -one game between the croupier and each player. However, everyone sitting at the table unanimously hopes that a number of buttons less than six will be drawn. Taikru according to the rules draws one more card. The card was immediately revealed and placed next to the cards that were already there. It was a five card. The player now clenches his fist and mutters in a whisper as if he is casting a spell. While staring at Taikru's hand, draws another card. The tension of the card reaches its maximum until it is flipped over and placed down, as if to break the expectations of the player who spoke up. Card 6 appears. 3, 7, 5, and 6 as a joke. The total is 21. Blackjack. Declaring another victory, Taikru collected all the chips on the table. The fainting players gritted their teeth helplessly. Then a visitor said, Asians are indeed very difficult. The visitor smoked and complained openly. They didn't socialize and even if they died early, they would still try to win. Taikru has heard that complaint for three days now. There's a common misconception that people who visit casinos have. If you get acquainted with a dealer, he'll do you a little favor. And if he wins the psychological battle, the hand will be in her favor. But unfortunately, all card games are entirely based on luck. As the number of repetitions increases, the rate of consecutive wins decreases. Being close to the dealer really doesn't change anything. Players who spend a lot of money leave one by one. Then an old man who guarded the table until the end lost the remaining chips. He said he owned a big shipping company and always tipped big. Philip, it looks like you're really winning now. But you have to lose often to reach your long-term goal. If you keep winning, who else will sit at your table? The old man said to Taikru. Taikru wanted to argue. But he restrained himself and just nodded. Then Tai Kru said, I'll keep that in mind. Please come back next time. The old man burst out laughing, saying, You told me to come back after spending all my money like that. Tai Jo just smiled at those words. In fact, despite saying that, he would probably visit Tai Kyo table again tomorrow. People with Greedy minds must win to feel satisfied. After the old man left, the table was empty. It was time to show up. Did you win today? Taiki was cleaning his chair when he heard the voice he'd been waiting for. Taiki looked up. It was the voice of a middle-aged woman. Then the woman made her voice again. You have to play with me too. Then the woman sat down in the center seat. Her name is Clara Chung. She said she does fashion-related business in Italy. She was born in China, but lives mostly in Italy. While playing cards, she said she married a local husband 10 years ago, and they had no children, so a sad story of estrangement between the couple emerged. But actually, it was all a lie. Clara Chung nationality is North Korean, not Chinese. Her real name is Choi Yanwa, and she was in charge of North Korea's European fund while living in Italy for almost 20 years. It was impossible without the trust of the party. Leadership is the size of the slush fund she managed. Alone was several trillion won. However, like other North Korean elites, he seems to have undergone a gradual ideological change. As his knowledge and thinking developed during his long life abroad, he became skeptical of the North Korean system, which had been in a stalemate for decades. Later, when massive purges of leaders were carried out, and his relatives and colleagues who followed the party were killed, he decided to turn to refugees for help. Italy, which is discussing and cooperating with South Korea and the United States on this issue, did not provide any information about 
Choi Yue immediately after she was deported. It was for her safety. That was a few years ago. Not long after the NIS started monitoring Choi Yue. Recently, intelligence information obtained showed that a social group with close ties to domestic political forces had created a large amount of illicit funds and transferred them to North Korea. According to intelligence information, this money was laundered in many European countries and transferred to North Korea. So Choi Yeo must have known about the situation. If it was just a purchase of support funds from pro-North Korea groups, or if the price was paid in advance to gain an advantage in the political world, then it is necessary to find out in detail who was involved in this matter. Who are they and what are their goals? North Korea is also aggressively hunting Choi Yiwa. Not just because of the trillions of won she swindled while in hiding, but because if she tells everything, from secret accounts hidden across Europe to fundraising methods, the origins and methods of money laundering will be revealed. As part of the sanctions against North Korea, if the secret accounts are closed, the North Korean government will not be able to collect dollars. Does he have a premonition that he will be pursued for the rest of his life? Choi Yanwa underwent full body plastic surgery right after being sought after. With the active support of the Italian government, her status also changed completely to Kiara Chung. It wasn't a lie that she married a local. Taikru just didn't know if the marriage was a limited relationship on paper or a real relationship. Choi Yanwa, who ended her long solitary life in Italy, recently started visiting casinos in Las Vegas. Is she trying to play the role of Kiara Chang, a successful businesswoman who is tired of married life? Or maybe she wants to unleash her true self in a place where everyone loses themselves. One thing to note in this activity is that there should be no physical conflict. Choi Yanwa is now Italian, so diplomatic tensions should be minimized. If the fact that she's in contact with South Korea is exposed, North Korea will go even crazier to eliminate her. Taikru tries to find a way to approach her as naturally as possible. The problem is that Choi Yeon was wariness of strangers is very high. The plainclothes bodyguard she hired pretended to be customers, hiding as quietly and neatly as possible throughout the casino. That was why disguising herself as Croupier in order to dispel Choi Yeonwa's suspicions. It seemed more effective to let the woman approach first rather than approaching in a hurry. So, for days ago, Taikru disguised himself as Philip, a croupier at the biggest casino in Las Vegas, and waited for her. Due to the nature of his job, his surveillance was intense and could not be ignored for even a moment. Even when the target doesn't show up, Taikru still has to exhaust himself dealing with other guests. He wondered if there had ever been an activity that left him so mentally exhausted. Choi Yanwa came down to the lobby around 2 a.m. every day and enjoyed the game. Taikru was trying to be polite, and he didn't even dare to start a conversation. However, he seemed interested. Then Taikru let out his voice. Do you want to play today? Good luck. The woman pouted at his industrial answer. I'll shuffle it. Taikru said shuffling the cards. It was a measure to prevent any suspicion of card manipulation by the machine. For that reason, Taikru put all his effort into practicing, staying up all night to learn how to handle and follow the habits of the real Philip. Before long, a waiter approached and said, Would you like something to drink? No. Choi Yan will refuse all services provided by the casino. It seemed that caution 
was ingrained in her. If there was something suspicious, she didn't even say a word. Then suddenly he asked, Is this also the secret of the casino business? Are you going to make me bet money on alcohol? Choi Hyun was said. Then the casino employee raised his voice. No, it's not. This is a special service for VIPs only. If you don't like alcohol, we provide water and soft drinks. Then Choi Yeon will politely said, Thank you for your concern, but I already have water. Taikru put down the cards one by one. Choi Yeon will quietly shrugged her shoulders with sarcasm. The way she touched the cards was a bit strange. While saying, but drinking with Philip is another matter. Then Taikru said, Sorry, I'm not allowed to drink alcohol while working. Then Choi Yeon was said again, with a strange smile. There's no need to drink it now. Those words were full of meaning. When their eyes met, Choi Yeon was smiled again and winked gently, like she was trying to seduce Taikru. Taikru is a little surprised because the atmosphere isn't special. Then Taikru tried to play his act. What's wrong? Don't you like it? But this is the first time a customer has invited me to drink alcohol. Taikru said in a very friendly tone. Then Choi Yeon will quickly reply again. You're lying. Taikru just responded to those words indifferently, then said again. Aren't you going to bed again? I'll turn over the cards. Suddenly Choi Yeon will put on a jealous expression as she said. You're cold like a rock. Choi Yeon will grumbled openly. That woman had no friends. Even when eating, she was always alone. She could have found a man to go out with if she wanted to, but she didn't. Taikru wondered why she was suddenly acting like that. Ever since finding out that Philip was Chinese American, she had always shown fondness and been friendly, of course. Taikru thought it was just part of the acting too. Or if Choi Yeonwoo was holding a liking for him, Taikru had no reason to refuse because he couldn't be bothered to wait for her here anymore. Besides, there weren't many disadvantages to approaching a target that way. All Taikru had to do was create the right atmosphere, then use the recognition trigger to extract the necessary information. But Taikru just wasn't sure yet. Taikru had to be careful. The total number of buttons on the card Choi Yanwa received was 17. The card placed in front of Taikru was the 9. Card. The face down card next to it had been turned over. When A appeared, Choi Yanwa's shoulder slumped and said, Oh, I lost. Didn't the beauty's plan work? Because blackjack is not a psychological battle. Then suddenly Choi Yeonwa asked an ambiguous question to Taikru. Aren't you gay? Taikru was a little surprised, but he answered casually. Do I look like it? Because he's currently playing the role of Phillips. Taikru smiled and took the chip. Choi Yeonwa said, Wow, and suddenly tilted her upper body forward. She began to examine every part of Taikru's face at close range. There was no way the advanced camouflage technique Taikru had created could be seen, but Taikju couldn't help but feel nervous under the gaze. Choi Yeon was said again, looking at this face, I don't know if you're gay or not, but you seem gentle. I like men who listen and understand. Then suddenly there was a very familiar voice in Tai Cruz here. You can't be sure, just looking at him from the outside. Someone suddenly interrupted the conversation between two people. Choi Yeon returned her head with a confused expression. For a moment, Tai Cruz's eyes jerked in disbelief. Because the voice that reached his ears was a voice that often whispered in his ears and the unique and distinctive scent, which had always pierced his smell. All this time, spread instantly. It was Xenia. Xenia said that with an English accent. Xenia slowly walked towards Taikru's table. 
Taikru, who momentarily woke up from his reverie, muttered, Why is he here? Taikru's face stiffened in surprise. Then Xenia let out his words again. What do you mean my channel? Even he's fit for a Chippendale show. Xenia said while looking at Taikru. Xenia looked Taikru up and down and added his words again. He's not soft at all. Xenia said again. Choi Yanwa took it as a naughty joke and laughed softly. The man who attracted people's attention, because his height was over two meters, and his appearance was different from the usual, elegant and dashing. Xenia looked like a white peacock, causing the people around the casino to glance at him. Of course, people's attention was also focused on Taikru's table. Then without hesitation, Xenia sat next to Choi Yanwa while saying, Can I sit here? Then Choi Yanwa replied indifferently, Of course, I didn't rent that seat either. Then Choi Yanwa nodded without hesitation. Xenia also glanced with a strange look at Taikru. Xenia seemed to realize that Taikru's awkwardness was entirely because he was surprised, undoubtedly. The Chippendale show was one of the attractions that represented Las Vegas, and it was a show where male strippers with beautiful bodies would perform various shows for the ladies with money to watch. Because Taikru has a very perfect and nice body. If you told a woman that, Taikru would look beautiful if he was naked. Taikru might take it as sexual harassment rather than a compliment. Xenia muttered to herself. Then suddenly Choi Yanwa said, You better be careful, he won't lose. While looking at Taikru, in response to Choi Yanwa's advice, Xenia nodded indifferently and looked at Taikru again. The two made a contact again. Taikru was actually eager to ask why someone who shouldn't be in Korea suddenly appeared here, but now was not the time. Taikru had to regain his composure. Then Xenia said again, Winning easily isn't an unpleasant thing. I can't wait to see how scary he is. Xenia chuckled and smiled mischievously while looking at Taikru. Taikru tried his best to keep a cold expression, as he felt the artificial skin covering his face being pulled off by Xenia. Then Xenia said again, Philip, what a bad name. Xenia said while staring at the name on Taikru's chest. Taikru could only glare at Xenia while muttering in annoyance. This brat keeps arguing. Does he really want to ruin my plans? Taikru tries to be patient and ignores Xenia. Taikru continues to shuffle his cards. Then Xenia said again, Chinese or Japanese? Or are you Korean? Xenia asked meaningfully with a smile. Taikru paused for a moment and looked at Xenia again with an angry expression and could only curse Xenia in his heart. Choi Yanwa looked at the two people who were arguing strangely, in turn and shrugged her shoulders, saying, Their faces all look the same. To Westerners? They think all Asians are Chinese. Xenia is still provoking Taikru with his words. Really? I don't know why, but he looks like a Korean I know. Xenia said again in a mocking tone. Taikru could only hold back his anger. Then Xenia raised her eyebrows as if he had done nothing wrong. When Taikru looked agitated, Choi Yanwa burst into laughter, advising Xenia, It's rude of you to say that Chinese people are Japanese or Korean. There are many people who feel offended by the long and intertwined history. Taikru thought about pulling Xenia's collar. After settling in Korea, Xenia did often appear in places where Taikru was on missions. Even if Taikru got a mission abroad once, even though Taikru had told Xenia not to follow him, because Xenia's status could cause negative opinions, diplomatically jeopardizing his status as ambassador. But Xenia ignores Taikru's warning and is always present at Taikru's every mission. Although sometimes Senya is very helpful to him, leading to faster success. 
But sometimes it's also annoying, like now. Xenia always wanders around and appears at will. He probably didn't know that he always stood out. Wherever he went with his perfect appearance and physique. Because Xenia never disguised herself like Taikru. Xenia always comes up with his own appearance, it's like an announcement. Which makes everyone around her know who he is. In fact, perhaps since Xenia appeared, Choi Yanwa already knew who Xenia was. Taikru knew that Xenia was always watching him and stalking him wherever he went. Taikru has repeatedly warned Xenia not to do that and tried to keep his personal agenda and work time separate but to no avail. Xenia came like a ghost wherever Taikru went. Taikru suspected that Xenia might have installed a listening or tracking device somewhere on his body. That's why Taikru always felt awkward and worried. If Xenia didn't show up soon, because Taikru didn't know where Xenia was and what was happening to her. Of course there had been no major problem so far, but Taikru couldn't help but worry. Because every time Xenia got involved, he always had to pay quite a price for her. The worry in Taikru's heart resounded again. Taikru was roused from his reverie by the sound of knocking on the table. When he woke up, Choi Yanwa and Xenia were staring at him. Shouldn't you be the one to deal the cards? Choi Yanwa said. Then Taikru shuffled the cards hurriedly while moving his hands out of habit. Taikru kept thinking how to overcome this predicament. Due to Xenia's presence, his head throbbed. Then Taikru placed a card in front of Choi Yanwa and Xenia. The A card and Q card were drawn one after another. Taikru placed a card in front of her. The cards were for the dealer. The first card was A. Choi Yanwa wailed and said, Look, if the croupier's face-up card is A, the player is at a huge disadvantage. Then Taikru asked the two, Have they bought some kind of insurance? With insurance, even if they lose, they only pay half of the bet. On the contrary, if the player won, they would receive 1.5x back. Choi Yanwa and Xenia shook their heads simultaneously. Taikru dealt out the cards one by one again. Choi Yanwa's card was 9, and Xenia's card was A. Blackjack was immediately settled. If Taikru got a blackjack, they wouldn't be able to receive money due to the tie. To prepare for this case, Xenia can earn back one time of the pre-bet amount. Then Taikru asked to Xenia, Do you want your money back, sir? Xenia shook his head with a smile. As usual, even when gambling, Xenia was still very ignorant. The face-down card was immediately turned over. It was a six, and Xenia won. After declaring Xenia as victory, Taikru took a chip from the bank and gave it to Xenia. The corners of Xenia's mouth curled up. Taikru ignored Xenia's smile and went back to shuffling the cards and starting a new game. Xenia's two cards were nine. Taikru's card was Q. At this time, the dealer should check the remaining cards with the reader and tell the player whether they have achieved blackjack or not. No blackjack this time. Xenia taps his index and middle fingers on the table to signal split. Because his fingers were long, the hand gesture was so elegant that Taikru unconsciously stared blankly at Xenia's flicking fingers. Then suddenly Choi Yanwa said, I give up. Those words brought Taikru back to his senses. Once again completing his duty as a dealer, he split Xenia's 9 card in half and dealt another card. When the A card and the 3 card were dealt, the total was 20, 12. Xenia got a total of 12 buttons. With the addition of 7, the card combination created a total of 19. Choi Yanwa, who was watching, exclaimed, Yes, God. Taikru and Xenia's eyes met again. 
Xenia quietly narrowed his eyes and observed Tai Cru's expression. Xenia's eyes were full of provocation. To be honest, the bet amount wasn't Tai Cru's personal money and it didn't matter how much he lost, but clearly, he was angry that Xenia kept winning. Then Xenia raised his voice again. Do you want to bet a bigger amount? It's so boring. We should do something to have more fun, right? Then Xenia slyly stacked the chips in his hand. At least $100,000 in each hand. Choi Yanwa watched Xenia with interest. The face down card was turned over. The sixth card was drawn. Since the number of cards was only 16, Xenia drew one more card. Card 8 was drawn and the sum of the three cards exceeded 21. Then Xenia grinned. The taunt was meant for Tai Kru. Then Xenia let out some more words. It's no fun that I keep winning. Tai Kru was very upset by the provocation, but he didn't show it. Tai Kru had almost exhausted his already maxed out patience. By now Xenia obviously knew very well what was on Tai Kru's mind. But she continued to provoke him. Then, a few more games were played, and Xenia showed no signs of leaving. More and more chips piled up in front of him. Xenia won 6 or 7 games out of 10 bets. Then the casino manager who saw immediately came and observed the game. This is because cheating often occurs or casino. Robberies occur due to collusion between players or between players and dealers. Taikro mentality becomes heavier. It was a game that depended on probability, but Taikro constantly lost to Xenia. Taikro wondered how Xenia could win continuously without cheating. Or was he born with that luck? Xenia's winning streak caught the public's attention again. Even Choi Yanwa took his hands off the card game and kept his eyes on Xenia. Every time they communicated with each other with their eyes, Taikru winked his eyes several times at Xenia, as if signaling Xenia to leave. But Xenia acted as if he didn't know anything. Taikru even nodded towards the door. But Xenia feigned ignorance and just raised his eyebrows innocently, without guilt. Taikru straightened his stiff face and grinned, but Xenia only smiled sarcastically. Then Xenia unleashed her provocative words again on Taikru. You can't blatantly show that you're displeased with the guests. Then Taikru answered quickly, I'm just a little tired. The corners of Taikru's mouth were pulled out with difficulty to give a fake smile feeling like he was going to have a seizure from Xenia. Then Xenia rolled the card between his long fingers and muttered softly, If you're tired, rest for a while. But those words didn't sound like a joke. But Choi Yanwa thought it was a joke. Then Choi Yanwa said, What? Are you really going to rest? While chuckling, Taikru felt his blood boil for a moment. Taikru was once again confused. The sum of the two cards Xenia received was 14. A somewhat ambiguous hand to discard or play and receive new cards. On the other hand, Taikru's card was A. Xenia made a bold shot without insurance. Another card was dealt. A 6 was added to complete 20. Xenia pushed all her chips in front of Taikru. Even the surrounding spectators were agitated by the sudden big bet. Taikru was also surprised by what Xenia did, muttering, Does she know how much his chips cost? Taikru muttered in his mind. Taikru knew Xenia had a lot of money and never worried about Xenia's wallet. But Taikru also never thought that Xenia would waste money at the table like that. Choi Yanwa also expressed her concern, then said, Are you okay? Then Xenia answered quickly, I'm not in the mood to play a bit. Everyone watching looked nervous as if they had risked their own money, but only Xenia herself was not nervous and acted relaxed, as if such money was nothing to her. 
Then Zenya cast a meaningful look at Taikru. Taikru sighs softly and continues playing cards. Taikru flips over the card. For a moment, the surrounding sounds seemed to stop. Everyone held their breath and just looked at Taikru's hand. Card 8 was turned over, and Zenya won again. It was an amazing result even though Taikru himself was in charge. The cheers and applause of the people watching echoed around the table. You're really good. I keep losing. Do you have any tricks? Choi Yanwa asked Zenya, who was excited as if she had one. Zenya leaned back in her chair and looked at Taikru's dumbfounded face. Then Zenya naturally turned to look into Choi Yanwa's eyes. Then he said, Want me to teach you how? Zenya said with a fairly soft tone. Taikru's hand that was pulling out the chip suddenly stopped. Hearing Zenya's words, Choi Yanwa showed deep curiosity, then said, Is there really a way? Then Zenya still with a gentle tone answered, Maybe, but maybe not. Then Choi Yanwa curiously asked again, How is that? Why don't you check it yourself? I can tell you how to personally, said Zenya kindly. Once again, Taikru was surprised by Zenya's words, muttering, What is she planning? While looking at Zenya's face, as if to ask for an explanation, perhaps because of the light, Zenya's long eyelashes seemed to sparkle. Taikru's heart boiled. Choi Yan would just stare at Zenya with confused eyes at the unexpected suggestion. Soon after, his smile deepened. Then Zenya said again, So, are we going to drink together? I don't have any friends. Zenya said in a soft tone. Choi Yanwa immediately said okay. Then Zenya nodded with a smile. Choi Yanwa quickly packed her clothes and bags. When Zenya stood up from his seat and looked Taikru in the eye, he greeted him without hesitation. See you next time. Mr. Philip. Taikru didn't know what to do with the unexpected situation. Then Zenya threw back a chip towards Taikru, saying, That's a tip for you. When Taikru received it, the chip was worth $500,000. Then Zenya smiles at a speechless Taikru and then escorts Choi Yanwa out of the casino. Taikru was stunned when he saw Zenya and Choi Yan were walking out of the casino together. Some time later, someone knocked on the table. Meanwhile, another guest occupied an empty seat and sat down to play. Then a customer asked, Aren't you going to deal cards? Then Taikru woke up from his reverie and said, Oh, sorry. Then Taikru awkwardly shuffled the cards again. The casino manager, who was watching from behind, was surprised at the amount of tip the customer gave Phillips. The manager squeezed Taikru's shoulder and then stepped back. Taikru shook his head to calm his mind, as the scene made him daydream for a moment. Then Taikru refocused on his work as Philip, but even after forcing himself to focus, all he could think about was Zenya and Choi Yanwa who had gone out together. Taikru didn't understand what Zenya was doing. Taikru was just vaguely very worried that something bad would happen, then mumbled again. There was still an hour left until the shift ended. Why is time so slow? Finally, it was time to change shifts. Taikru quickly changed. In the locker room, his fellow casino workers joke around, but Taikru can't get along like he used to. He refused an invitation to go out for a drink and hardly left the locker room. At that moment, Annie, the receptionist, comes to see Taikru. He gave Taikru an envelope of unknown origin and said that it was an item sent to Philip by a customer. It was an envelope with 
Logo of a famous hotel near the casino. Inside was a card said to be a room key. It was obviously from Xenia. Taikru left his colleagues who were teasing him. They teased and asked if he was going to meet his lover. Taikru just smiled and ignored all the teasing from Philip's friends. Then Taikru went to the employee parking lot. While Taikru drives the old SUV to safety, it was a large mechanized car wash. He casually parked the SUV and went to the bathroom. When he reappeared, he had now completely transformed from Philip to Kwan Taiju, an elite agent from Korea. Taikru then drove to the parking lot across the street and got into his luxury sedan. Taikru immediately started the car and sped off. His destination being a luxury hotel with the logo printed on the envelope. The hotel is located in a prime location of Las Vegas. Here guests can enjoy views of Las Vegas from any side. 3,000 guest rooms. Cars and people going in and out continuously, non-stop. Taikru was there. He left the valet parking lot and entered the hotel lobby. When he arrived at the elevator reserved for guest rooms, the receptionist asked Taikru to show the room key card. Taikru obediently handed over the key card that Xenia had put in an envelope earlier. The employee then asked to wait for a moment and called another employee. The new employee who appeared immediately welcomed him warmly and then led Taikru to the other side of the building. It seemed that only that side was very quiet and it was reserved for VIP rooms only. When Taikru entered the elevator and inserted the key card, the light on the upstairs button lit up. When he got there and looked out, there were only a few doors in the hallway. The room Taikru entered was the presidential suite, which is said to cost between 30 and 40 million won per night. There are three bedrooms. For bathrooms, a spacious living room, a private bar, a terrace with comfortable sofa beds, and a private pool. The ancient Persian-style interior is very charming. Taikru saw the scale and splendor and couldn't help but sigh. The employee said to call them anytime if he needed anything and then left. Taikru looked around and went straight in without looking around. Taikru picked out a bottle of whiskey and a glass, then sat on the sofa in the living room. The seat cushion was gently turned to support his tired body in the most comfortable way possible. As soon as the glass was filled, it was empty in one gulp. The feeling of a full stomach soon disappeared. But after getting a little comfortable, complicated things came to Taikru's mind. He poured and then drank the whiskey in the glass again. Taikru's eyes were always on the door. Truly, not a day went by without him getting angry at Xenia. Even if he asked her not to interfere in work matters, Xenia wouldn't listen. Taikru thought it was better for him to talk to the wall than Xenia. If you wanted to come, you should have told me beforehand. Taikru muttered in his heart. However, Xenia always surprised Taikru every time and everywhere. Taikru couldn't tell if Xenia was trying to help or if he was trying to hinder. Xenia was a diplomat, but he was not cautious at all. Taikru would not be able to forget Xenia's face once he saw him, but Taikru had never seen Xenia in disguise. It seemed that in Xenia's mind, no international problems could arise for herself, with his identity anywhere. Knowing that Xenia was also very careless in Russia, why should Taikru himself be more anxious about Xenia? Even ten fingers couldn't count all the trouble Xenia had caused. Taikru remembered the time he worked in Dubai back then. Taicho actually tried to stay home as much as possible during the holidays. Because of his mother's birthday, 
But there was an emergency from headquarters and there was nothing he could do. At that time, Zenya visited his mother's house while Taikur was away. But suddenly, Zenya showed up with her mother's homemade rice cake soup to Dubai. Have you heard that? Koreans have to eat rice cake soup on the first day of the new year? Taikuru didn't understand how his mother and Zenya could understand and speak to each other. While both speaking different languages, due to the long flight, all the water in the soup spilled out. Just looking at it made Taikuru feel suffocated. So Taikuru refused to eat it and said he didn't need to eat, but it was useless. Zenya immediately threatened Taikuru, saying that if he ignored his sincerity, then his sincerity towards his target would be in vain. And since his target has fallen into his hands, Taikuru has no choice but to swallow the driest desert rice cake soup. That's not all. There are times when Taikuru gets into trouble because he's Zenya estate. At that time, Taikuru was on a mission in Iran, a traditional ally of North Korea, and the two countries illegally traded weapons and supported the development of a nuclear program under the pretext of scientific and technical cooperation from a very early age. However, American intelligence agencies determined that exchanges between the two countries gradually declined from 2013 onwards. However, intelligence obtained from UN member states directly contradicts this analysis. Until recently, the two countries actively traded in weapons and technology. Taikru also heard that a North Korean trading company called Cheongwon in Tehran conveyed this. It is even known that ballistic Missile-related parts are transported via Air Koryo and Iran Air, the national airlines of both countries. To get clearer and more detailed information, Taikru went to the commander of the Iranian army. However, Zenya suddenly appeared right in his place. Since the target had recognized Zenya for a long time, even Taikru had to greet them. Zenya openly introduced Taikru as his lover. At that time, the Iran commander and Taikru himself were both surprised. Then, because of Taikru's sardonic gaze, Zenya immediately corrected his words and said Taikru as his subordinate, saying that it was just a joke. From the looks of it, Taikru was affiliated with the Russian embassy, so there was no doubt about his target. The risky campaign back then was easily solved thanks to Russia and Iran having a common enemy, the United States, and the two countries' long-term cooperation in security and economics. Of course, only physical suffering was reduced. But mental suffering was several times more than usual. Zenya always interferes like that. Whenever Taikru gets a mission, Zenya sometimes ruined all of Taikru's plans and actively boasted that the mission was completed entirely thanks to her. In exchange, Taikru would be taken to Ajinoki Island and forced to go on vacation many times. Eventually, they always stopped by Russia after completing a mission together. There was one time, Director Quack asked about matters related to Xenia. Director Quack also couldn't easily understand Taikru's ambiguous explanations. Taikru was very upset every time Xenia came home to see his mother. It's because he doesn't care about what he can and can't say because Zenya always said embarrassing things. One day, his mother felt uncomfortable communicating with Zenya. He heard that there was translation software and asked how to use it. Taikru immediately broke out in a cold sweat. Then Taikru said that Russian translation wasn't common. And even when there was translation software, translation errors were common. Taikru tried to cover up the truth. His mother was very sorry, but 
still obediently believed her son's words. But Taikru also didn't know when the lie would be exposed. Suppose his mother tried to translate Zenya's words through translation software, like using a translator app. Just imagining it makes Taikru's head spin. Every day that passes is like walking on a tight rope, ready to strangle her at any moment. Looking back on his past journey with Zenya, Taikru can only sigh. How did he get involved with such a troublesome, crazy man? But it was Taikru who was determined to tame Zenya, rather than continue to stay away from him. But it was harder than expected. Even though they've been together for over a year, Taikru still has no idea where Zenya is and what she does when he's not with him. Even when they were together all day, Taikru had no idea what Zenya was thinking. It was all Taikru complaining in his heart while daydreaming. Then Taikru snapped out of his reverie and muttered, By the way, where's that troublemaker? And what is he doing? Taikru kept looking at the door. Isn't it about time he came back? Taikru muttered in his heart, It's been two hours after Zenya left the casino with Choi Yanwa. But still no message from Zenya. Did something happen? Taikru muttered again in his heart. Since Taikru didn't know what Zenya would do, it was hard to guess what Zenya was doing right now. The two of them said they would go drinking together. But Taikru wondered, was that all there was to it? It's definitely not just drinking. Taikru thought about intercourse. Was she rolling around in bed? Of course that wasn't surprising. Xenia's lower body was promiscuous by nature, and when it came to women, he didn't care about age, nationality, or style. Instead, it's Choi Yanwa that I have to worry about, right? Taikru muttered again in his heart, with an annoyed look on his face and his mind. Taikru, he tapped his watch, the ticking second hand making him even more nervous. Finally, Taikru stood up from his chair with a sigh and stepped towards the door. He wasn't wearing camouflage or had any plans in mind, but he had to find Xenia soon. Just as he was about to reach for the doorknob, it turned out to be unlocked and the door opened from the outside. The person who appeared before Taikru was none other than Xenia. Xenia slowly observed Taikru who had a serious expression from face to toe. Then Taikru quickly asked, Where did you go? I saw him. You went with that woman. What are you two doing until now? Taikru said in an annoyed tone, like a woman interrogating his lover. Taikru spoke meaningfully. Taikru felt uncomfortable but he tried to calm down and then looked at Xenia, unruffled. Then Xenia casually walked past Taikru and then sat on the sofa, pouring whiskey from the bottle Taikru had already drunk, almost half into a glass. But Xenia didn't drink it right away, and just played with the glass, then Taikru asked again. What about Choi Yanwa? What did you do with her? Taikru said curiously. Then Xenia answered indifferently. Why, what's wrong? Did you think I would kill her? Xenia blinked and then slowly looked up. He even laughed at the confused Taikru and said again, I'm not that cruel, while smiling strangely. Then Taikru asked again, still not satisfied with Xenia's answer. What exactly are you planning to do to seduce that woman? Are you planning to use your handsome face? Taikru said in an angry tone. Even he himself did not know why he was so angry. Who uses a handsome face? Xenia said softly. Taikru was upset. Also because Xenia had interrupted the subject that Taikru had been following diligently for days. Xenia smiled and looked very satisfied at Taikru's words, which seemed jealous. Then he said, Were you planning to look for me? Are you afraid that woman and I will have fun together? Sighed Xenia who was provoking Taikru. 
Tigre was surprised and quickly answered Zenya's words. Of course not, because I don't know what you do to that woman. If you kill her, that would be a problem. Tigre said in a nervous tone, I told you before, I won't attack first, unless someone else touches me first. Zenya said in a serious tone. Tigre could only sigh and was speechless. It was true that Zenya had said that. Then Zenya tilted his chin to the chair next to her, folded his hands and said, You don't seem to need this. In Zenya's hand was a small microchip. Then Taikjo curiously asked, What is it? It contains information about North Korean loan accounts in Europe and the source of funds deposited into each account. ETC, Zenya said in a serious tone. Zenya always easily got what Taikru wanted. Therefore, Taikru continued to feel uncomfortable because he felt defeated. Then Taikru looked at Zenya with a disapproving expression and then reluctantly approached Zenya. Taikru reached for the chip, but Zenya suddenly pulled his hand away. He said, Do you think I would waste so much time just to get this? I'm not like someone who can't show his face. I don't have anyone to support me like you. Zenya said, Zenya says how Taikru doesn't like to show his face and always disguises himself while on missions. Unlike her, who is always blatant, Taikru can only grit his teeth when he hears Zenya as sarcasm. Zenya looked at Taikru, then smiled contentedly. His expression also seemed to become more arrogant. While saying, Why are you still so shy? Taikru saw Zenya who still continued to tease Taikru. That's because of you. Taikru said quickly. Taikru's head was throbbing. It was something that often happened when he chatted with Zenya. He would never win if he argued with Zenya. Instead of continuing the dialogue, it's better to just give in. Taikru muttered as he took a deep breath and stretched out his hand, about to take the chip, but Zenya brushed it away. Then Taikru quickly said, What are you doing? Quickly give me the chip. However, Zenya didn't want to give the microchip away. She just flipped the chip around as if to show off, while saying, I never said I would give this to you, Zenya said in a low tone. Then Taikru quickly replied, What? Hurry up and give it. You don't need it anyway, right? Zenya was still flipping through the chip and indifferently said, That's right, but now it's in my hands. It's up to me how I want to use it and I got this at a very high price. Then a long sighing sound came from Taikru's mouth. He said, Is there gold in that ugly thing of yours? That the woman would give up something precious to feel satisfied? Taikru said in an annoyed tone. Zenya smiled in satisfaction, grinning, and said, Oh, is that why you've been sulking all this time? And looking upset? Zenya said, Still teasing Taikru. Who's sulking? Taikru said in a nervous voice. Then Zenya continued his words again. You're so naive. That woman has stolen 400 billion from the dictator's slush fund. He would have died if caught, but he still had the courage to do it. Could it be such a woman? So loses to let his guard down with someone he had only met for a few days? If I hadn't intervened, you would have been dismembered in his bed by now and interrogate you. Who sent you? What is the purpose of you approaching him? And she will try to hurt your body to find the truth about you. She's a woman with only money, but that doesn't mean she can't use tricks with her beauty. Zenya said in a serious tone, while looking at Taikru who could only remain silent at Zenya's words. But that's a fact. When Choi Yan was suddenly seduced, Philip Taikru became suspicious. Everyone's preference is different. But Philip is not a very sexually attractive man. 
Choi Yeon was said she liked gentle men. The problem was, she didn't know if it was real, because he had never shown anything like that before. After all, was she always suspicious of Philip? Not knowing that he had planned the whole thing with the intention of confirming her identity? As Taikru muttered that in his mind, Xenia added his words again. If it was you, it would be a different story. What do you mean? Taikru asked Xenia. Now seems like a good time to release your beauty plan. Xenia said with a strange smile. Taikru frowned. Then the distress siren in his head went off. It was Xenia's habit to speak in riddles rather than directly. And Taikru already knew Xenia wouldn't give up something he'd already gotten. Taikru furrows his brow and has a bad feeling. Xenia smiles strangely again, taking a sip of his whiskey, as if amused by Taikru's reaction. Then Xenia took something from a drawer near the desk and threw it at Taikru. It was a small shopping bag. Part of the contents of the pack, visible from the upturned shopping bag. At first glance, it resembled a woman's dress with a bow tie. Taikru took it out, asking, What do you want me to do with this? While looking at Xenia with suspicious eyes. Then the corners of Xenia's mouth formed a long curve. With a happy expression, Xenia chuckled, then said, Put it on. Taikru was surprised with a long sigh, as he opened the contents of the package in the dressing room, then muttered, You H.H.? This crazy brat really has strange tastes. Taikru sighed as he put on the clothes he received from Xenia. No, no, that's absurd to call it clothes. It even looks like a naughty woman's underwear. The black pants were really tight on Taikru's lower body as he wore them with a zipper along his crotch. And the tight shirt only had a butterfly band and cuffs. Then Taikru looked in the mirror. He was immediately convinced that he was going to be like the Tonga performer at the Chippendale show. If it's like this, Taking everything off might not be so embarrassing. Taikru muttered in his heart. Taikru looked at his own face in the mirror and sighed, as if his face was as thick as a wall from embarrassment. The tight pants rubbed against his skin directly and felt strange. Wearing clothes but not wearing them, like someone who couldn't wait to show off his breasts. How could it be that Brett's taste is like this? Taikro muttered again in his heart, with a long sigh. Taikjo reluctantly looked at himself in the mirror. Xenia urged him to come out from the changing room. Then Taikro came out with a feeling of shame and an annoyed look on his face. But he brushes off his embarrassment because it will only make Xenia happy which provokes him more. Taikro composed himself before leaving the room and going to the living room. Xenia, who was lying on the sofa, immediately grinned when she saw Taikru and said, Look at that, it suits you perfectly. Xenia's body, which had been lying down, now leaned forward. His robe hung loosely. I don't know. Is it because he had just bathed? But his skin became smoother and his golden hair seemed thinner due to the moisture. His eyes also became more transparent and rolled slowly. Taikro murmured in his heart, momentarily mesmerized by Xenia's appearance. Then Xenia looked intensely at Taikro. His piercing gaze licks every corner of his body down to the unseen parts. Taikro has known Xenia for a long time, but not with such a mischievous face like now. Then Xenia waved his hand and said come here, motioning for Taikro to come closer. The arrogant attitude was annoying but Taikro had no other choice. He could only surrender and walk closer to Xenia. That's something Taikro has to pay every time he gets something from Xenia. 
Taikro comes and stands in front of Xenia. Xenia reached out his hand and grabbed the back of Taikro's thigh. His long, slender fingers pressed firmly against Taikro's taut skin. The tight pants were pulled up and Taikro's trunk and side was pulled up as well. Taikro involuntarily tensed his stomach. Then Xenia lifted the corner of her mouth as if he also felt the slight. Change in Taikru's expression. Disagreeing with that attitude, Taikru took the initiative first. Taikru placed his knee between Xenia's open legs and used one hand to grab the back of the sofa where Xenia was leaning. As the distance grew closer, Xenia looked up at him with a satisfied expression. Taikru looked into Xenia's eyes and gently touched his ear and slowly rubbed Xenia's entire ear as if massaging it. Xenia breathed slowly, his long eyelashes fluttering slightly. Taikru suddenly felt a sense of happiness in his heart, like a satisfied accomplishment. When he saw Xenia in such a happy mood and enjoying his touch, it seemed like he had truly tamed someone who was no different from a wild beast. Taikjo lifted the chin of Xenia, who was looking at him passionately and kissed her. The corners of Xenia's mouth trembled. When Taikru stuck out his tongue to lick Xenia's upper lip, then Xenia's hands gripped Taikru's buttocks. He quietly pursed his upper lip and released it then suddenly tilted his head and pushed his tongue into Taikru's mouth. As if he had been waiting, Xenia pulled Taikru's body back and bit his tongue. That red tongue that constantly mixes with touch and muddy sounds. Xenia's hands rubbed Taikru's buttocks and then gradually moved up his back. Every place his fingertips touched seemed to have a light electric current flowing over it. Taikru's back instantly trembled. Xenia smiled more deeply. There was a feeling, a tingling between his legs. As Xenia's hand grazed Taikru's straight spine, then Taikru grabbed the hand tickling his back and held it tightly. The lips tightly pressed against each other parted. Xenia raised his head and kissed him again. He bit Taikru's lower lip and stuck out his tongue. Even if he grabbed Xenia's shoulder to push his away, it would have no effect. Taikru responded for a moment and then turned his head. Xenia licks his glossy lips with a mischievous expression. Then suddenly Xenia said, Isn't this like a vulgar show? Xenia said while whispering in a soft tone. Then Taikru replied indifferently, If not you, who else would want to see something like this? Self-esteem is lower than expected. Or are you pretending not to know? Xenia just smiled at Taikru's sarcastic words. Then he pulled Taikru even closer. While caressing Taikru's shoulder blades, Xenia gently rubbed the tip of his nose against Taikru's nipples. Taikru's eyes narrowed slightly at the strange feeling. The unstimulated flesh was pressed down and rubbed, and then crushed without any countermeasures. According to the man's movements, the feeling that had been forgotten for a while returned and was stimulated faster between Xenia's legs. Xenia rubbed the tip of his nose and lips as if he was biting them, then suddenly raised his head and buried herself deeply into Taikru's neck. Xenia bites his neck and sucks on the thin skin, while constantly squeezing Taikru's buttocks with both hands. Taikru's body, which originally stood straight, collapsed little by little under Xenia's outpouring of stimulation. Taikru tried to separate herself from Xenia, who was nibbling on his neck, but Xenia ignored Taikru's refusal. Xenia is a little annoyed with Taikru who keeps hitting the brakes in the middle of the game. Then as if to show her annoyance, Xenia bit Taikru's chin in anger. Then suddenly Taikru remembered Choi Yanwa and asked, Is that woman really okay? Then Xenia replied in an annoyed tone, Did you get hit in my absence? 
Why are you so worried about that woman's life and death? Answer me if he's still alive. Taikru said again in a pushy tone, That woman is safe. I didn't touch her. Not even one finger. Zenya said, while continuing the action. This time, Zenya licked Taikru's ear and inserted his tongue into his ear hole. Zenya's middle finger slowly traced Taikru's narrow hole and pushed it inside gently. Then Taikru let out a small groan and stretched his arms back and grabbed the back of Zenya's neck pulling her away from him. When Zenya's action was breaked again suddenly by Taikru, Zenya just let out a long sigh. Then Taikru protested Zenya's actions. This is not foreplay but torture, Taikru said in an annoyed tone. Then quickly, Zenya justifies his actions with his words. Shouldn't we check the condition of the product before trying it? Zenya said with a mischievous tone. Then Taikru also quickly answered Zenya's words. How did you get that chip without touching Choyanwa? Or did you do it? Taikru said in an annoyed tone. That woman already knows who I am. Zenya said again. Taikru was a little surprised, then muttered under his breath. When Zenya said that, no wonder he knows you if you're hanging around looking like that. Zenya just laughed softly when Taikru said that. Zenya thought those words were a compliment from Taikru. Then Zenya said again, I actually proposed a deal to her. I know what he needs most right now. Zenya said, then Taikru let out more words. Did you show the Bogdanov family tattoo in front of Choi Yanwa? Yes, you could say that. Zenya said with his arrogant tone. What kind of peaceful negotiation? Taikru asked again with great curiosity. I don't know how much you misunderstood me. But so far the negotiations have gone without any problems. Zenya said confidently. Of course, Zenya often referred to herself as a skilled businesswoman. Even when Taikru went to look for Anastasia, Zenya always had a flexible and thoughtful conversation in an elegant manner. Seeing as Zenya always comes and goes alone at his mother's house, their communication still goes quite well. However, Taikru cannot trust his for sure, due to Zenya's unpredictable nature. Seeing Zenya's suspicious expression, Taikru sighed and said, I don't believe it. Then Taikru lifted the hem of Zenya's robe and grabbed Zenya's trunk that had been erect from earlier under the robe. Then he said, You're still more focused here than talking to me, so I don't believe you. Then Taikru kissed Zenya lightly and stood up and knelt down. Zenya's large trunk clenched and Taikru's hand trembled. Zenya also gently rubbed his body against Taikru's inner thigh. Zenya was about to prepare to take off Taikru's pants. Taikru's face suddenly became blurry. Remembering Zenya as an appropriate presence, the time at the casino, Taikru remembered he wanted to ask Zenya something. Because while at the casino, he didn't have a chance to speak properly. How did you know that the casino dealer was me? Because with just hacking and eavesdropping, it wasn't enough to figure out my disguise identity. So are you developing a mind reader? That's really hard to guess. Even Philip's friends couldn't recognize me at all. Taikru said curiously, I can recognize you right away as Taikru, not as Philip. Zenya said in a soft tone, To be honest, Taikru was still not used to Zenya reaching her destination so quickly. Taikru showed his disapproval by putting on a sullen expression. Then Zenya lifted Taikru's head and pressed his lips to his. Taikru's lips, their lips pressed together like a seal and then gently parted. The look in his eyes was also softer than usual. Then Zenya said again, it was very easy for me 
to recognize mine. Then Taikru looked into Zenya's blue eyes and murmured in his heart, After all, she is very good at manipulating people. The gaze was intense. Then Taikru held Zenya's face with both hands. Zenya stared blankly at Taikru with a relaxed face. Pure desire did not suit her. Only a deep passion for his was reflected in those eyes. Now Taikru wondered if he had gone mad, thinking of such things with Zenya. Taikru sighed in despair and then lowered his head to kiss Zenya's lips. Zenya hugged Taikru's waist tightly and kissed Taikru back. Their lips circled each other and then rubbed against each other each time apart. The corners of Zenya's mouth lifted slightly. If Zenya had a tail, it would probably be wagging wildly, out of pleasure. Taikru sucked Zenya's lips gently, then ran his tongue over Zenya's protruding tongue. The moist, soft flesh was rubbed, then mixed together. Soon, flowing saliva formed in Taikru's mouth. Taikru sucked Zenya's wiggling tongue between his lips, then tilted his head and inserted his tongue into Zenya's mouth. Zenya also lowered his head slightly and did not hesitate to accept Taikru's tongue with pleasure. Zenya's breastbone continued to jiggle repeatedly as if highly aroused. Zenya was not wearing any clothes after bathing. He was only wearing a rope towel, so static electricity continued to build up, as if enjoying the ticklish stimulation. Zenya traced Taikru's back, and who was only focused on the kiss, slowly but deeply aroused, was slowly but deeply aroused. Even while kissing, they both let out sweet low moaning sounds. Every time Zenya encountered the unusual image of a man like a refrigerator, Zenya felt a strange excitement. A moment later, their lips parted, their eyes met, out of lust. Warm yet quick breaths continued to blow on each other's necks. Zenya gently closed his eyes and suddenly stuck out his tongue again to lick Taikru's saliva-drenched lips. Then Taikru grimaced with an annoyed face while saying it's because of you. Either take the risk to tame his or just wait quietly, Taikru said. Then Zenya also let out her words. A good dog also needs to be trained. Taikru could only put on an annoyed expression and muttered in his heart, this brat never budges a word. Then suddenly Taikru heard a jig and his zipper opened. His hip bones were also exposed without a gap. Taikru's back suddenly shook from the cold air blowing on his body. Zenya had only opened the zipper halfway. The wind caused Taikru's trunk to erect, although it was still tucked tightly inside his pants. Then suddenly Zenya uttered his naughty words again. You must have loosened it while bathing, right? It's quite soft. While groping Taikru's hole with both hands, and looking at Taikru as if to confirm, then said, I should be more humane than other people. If I don't loosen it, maybe it will bleed. Zenya grinned then lowered his head and bit Taikru's chest then let go. At that moment, the tip of Zenya's chin gently pressed against Taikru's nipple, causing Taikru to tremble and suddenly tighten his chest. Pretending not to know, Zenya continued to bite the surrounding flesh until it left bite marks, then used his thumb to gently rub his other nipple and squeeze it gently. Taikru's upper body tilted forward in response to the unexpected stimulation. The soft, plump chest rushed in as if it wanted to crush the sharp bridge of Zenya's nose. Zenya happily opened his mouth and sucked in a small piece of flesh he had long coveted. Hot breath along with saliva and a soft mouth feeling rushed in at the same time. When Zenya began to gently suck on the nipple, his brows furrowed while letting out a low moan. Zenya held Taikru's hand pushing his shoulder and continued to suck Taikru's trunk. 
He bit and sucked so hard that the skin around his nipples quickly turned red. Xenia uses his tongue to rub Tigru's nipples and then roll them, making them hard. His nipples become more sensitive to stimulation, and the hot breath also spreads a strange feeling. Tigru became very rough. Xenia hugs him tighter as he keeps trying to push him, his saliva rubbing against the slippery flesh. Tigru's shaft, which had been stuck in his pants, was now fully erect. Tigru couldn't stand it anymore. He wanted to touch it with his own hands, but he couldn't move because Xenia was wrapped around his arms and body. Xenia's foreplay tends to focus on Tigru's chest. Tigru himself also enjoys the stimulation, but sometimes Tigru wonders if this is it. Due to Xenia's lack of childhood lust that did not materialize, as Tykru murmured in his heart, Xenia removed his mouth from Tykru's nipple. Every time Xenia sucked hard on his nipple, it felt like something was being sucked out of his body. His upper body kept leaning forward and the heat from his chest gathered between his legs. Tykru continues to struggle against the unbearable pleasure, his thighs rubbing against Xenia's thighs and continues to stimulate his shaft. While Tykru was still moaning, Xenia took a gel and inserted it into Tykru's shaft. Tykru is shocked, his shoulders shaking. Xenia poked Tykru's hole with his finger. Tykru's spine stiffened with a clear feeling of compression. Xenia rubbed the outer circle while expanding the inner wall. Tykru's upper body leaned back and trembled. The knees supporting the body also swayed. Xenia kisses Tykru's nape while inserting another finger to loosen the hole. Xenia spread to fingers wide and wiggled them, then squeezed and pressed the warm insides to stimulate him. Every time that happened, Tykru's abdominal muscles contracted. Then suddenly Xenia let out his voice. I thought your body was pretty tough, but it's nothing compared to this. Xenia said in a mocking tone, then laughed softly. But after a day or two, it will constrict again as if no one had ever touched it. It's a hassle to have to loosen it every day. I guess I tried really hard before, but it was still too tight inside. You did it on purpose, right? Every time you tense up, my fingers will get sucked in deeper. Xenia murmured softly, like babbling. Then Xenia extended his other fingers. Although nothing compared to Xenia's shaft, three fingers are enough to make Tykru struggle. He was instantly paralyzed from the bottom up. Every time he entered the hole and rubbed it, the gel filled inside would ooze out. The entire genital area could not stand the stimulation and turned red. Xenia still calmly inserted her finger into the small hole and rubbed it. The long finger was inserted very deeply, so the arousal was maximum. Tykru felt uncomfortable, as if he wanted to push Xenia's hand away. His stomach was tight and felt full then Tykru let out his voice. Stop it! While grabbing Xenia's hair, Xenia's soft blonde hair easily slipped between Tykru's fingers. Tykru's shaft throbbed, getting such pressure and seemed to explode. Tykru was about to unzip his pants, but Xenia grabbed Tykru's wrist. Let go quickly, Tykru said in an annoyed tone, because he couldn't hold it anymore. You're so impatient. Do you really want it? Sad Xenia, who deliberately provoked Tykru. You're the one who stimulated me, so hurry up. Tykru said in an annoyed tone, but Xenia was still teasing Tykru with his words. I know you like rough play. Then suddenly, Xenia grabbed Tykru's waist and gently lifted him up. The completely unexpected situation shocked Tykru's body. Tykru's face is stunned for a moment and then quickly grimaces as Xenia's shaft enters his hole. 
Then Taikru's hand exerted all its strength on Xenia's shoulder. Xenia drowns in sweet pleasure as half of his shaft enters Taikru's hole. Xenia exhales a hot breath and presses his lips to Taikru's neck, whose skin is covered with Taikru's goosebumps. Then whispered in Taikru's ear, you are the one who wants him. Taikru bit his molars and pretended to be strong until the end. Xenia lifted the corner of his mouth and without hesitation lifted Taikru's lower body. The hole that had been narrowed now opened forcefully and swallowed Xenia's muscular flesh. Taikru's face stiffened, then spontaneously let out a curse. Then Xenia quickly covered Taikru's mouth with one hand while muttering softly. I told you, but you want it fast. Xenia scolded Taikru for swearing at his while kissing Taikru's ear. A moment later, Taikru sighs and relaxes. Xenia's hard shaft stuck beneath him, scratches his insides and slides in deeper. His lower abdomen quickly tightened and bulged out. The sound of moaning could be heard throughout the room. Taikru involuntarily moaned and buried his head in Xenia's neck. Xenia's strong body scent made his head dizzy. His body seemed to have memorized the sensations engraved every time. He made love with Xenia. Unable to resist the feeling, Taikru involuntarily knelt down. The hole that held Xenia's was also shrinking. Veins were clearly visible on Xenia's smooth forehead, and the corners of his mouth were slightly raised. Suddenly Xenia groaned and said, Taikru, are you planning to kill me? Stop talking, said Taikru, while gritting his teeth. In an instant, his seemingly floating body fell straight down. Xenia's vaguely covered huge trunk was immediately pushed to its roots. Taikru's weight moved and crushed Xenia's lower body. A loud stomping sound was heard. Taikru tilted his head helplessly. Due to the piercing feeling that ran down his spine and up to his brain, Taikru gritted his molars again and swallowed the groan that was about to erupt. Strength channeled into his fingertips that gripped Xenia's shoulders tightly. Xenia calmly touched. Taikru's hole that was twitching like a child and buried his head in Taikru's chest. Taikru's exotic skin quickly became bluish red blotches from the bite marks and suction of Xenia's mouth. Taikru bent down and quickly rolled up Xenia's robe and gripped it tightly. Taikjo raised his knees and held Xenia's thighs tightly to stop him movements. Xenia rubs Taikjo's nipples and pulls him up, his pelvis tingling with pleasure. Taikru can't stand it anymore and rubs Xenia's face gently. Taking advantage of the opening, Xenia lifts Taikru's momentarily frozen lower body. As Taikru moans from repeated penetration, Xenia puts his lips on Taikru's chin and neck and continues to push him. Taikru can't hold back any longer as a sudden urge to urinate arises. Then Taikru hurriedly tried to open the zipper that was blocking him, but Xenia blocked him. Xenia deliberately poked him hard again under his body, as if deliberately teasing Taikru, so that Taikru couldn't unzip his pants, so his repeated attempts were in vain. Taikru has an annoyed look on his face, as Xenia holds down the zipper of his pants. Then Xenia gave a condition, kiss me. As he parted his lips, Taikru could no longer argue with Xenia because he was struggling to hold in his pee. Then Taikru gripped Xenia's hair and pushed his tongue between Xenia's parted lips. The tongues fused together, the inside of the mouth quickly became sweet. Only then is the zipper of Taikru's pants in Xenia's hand fully exposed. Taikru's shaft, already aroused from within, rushes out and bouncing. Taikru was about to get up but Xenia pulled him up and pressed him against his stomach. 
Taikuru's body trembled every time. His ass was impaled in his shaft, rubbed against Sanya's belly. Then suddenly a clear liquid spurted over Sanya's belly. The feeling of relief came to the point that his hair stood up. His eyes, ears, nape, and even his shoulders turned red. Sanya did not seem to mind at all about the clear liquid, which had soaked his front body. A moment later, all that remained in the living room was the sound of two people breathing and sighing, with their skin rubbing against each other. Sanya put Taikuru's arm behind his shoulders and hugged her tightly until their shoulders touched. Are you satisfied? Who keeps hitting the brakes in the middle of the road? Xenia said in a mocking tone. Teasing mixed with sweet laughter came out of Xenia's mouth. Xenia pressed his lips on Taikru's shoulder and moaned softly. Taikru lowered his head as if preparing for what was about to happen. His arms around Xenia's neck also tightened. The next moment, Xenia twisted down and pushed hard inside. A moment later, Taikru trembled as if he was falling. Xenia's entire body stiffens as well, as his shaft is bitten hard by Taikru's hole, and his lungs tighten making it difficult for his to breathe. Here, do you like it? Xenia says in a mischievous tone while teasing Taikru. Taikru didn't answer but just hugged Xenia tightly. Xenia, without hesitation, roughly inserts his huge shaft with a single stroke. Taikru's body seems to be shattered by it. The sound of moaning and sighing shamelessly came out of Taikru's mouth again. Taikju did not know what to do with the strong stimulation. His lips were bitten by Xenia with his teeth and Xenia's mouth repeatedly drew long arches, as if he was very happy. Xenia's desire is increasing, so Taikru wants more. Xenia suddenly gripped Taikru's thigh and stood up. Then Taikru quickly grabs Xenia as his body slides due to gravity. Her penetration becomes deeper. Taikru groaned. He could feel Xenia's shaft had penetrated all the way to his ribs. The breath he couldn't exhale or swallow got stuck in his throat, and he continued to tremble. Xenia continued to kiss Taikru's ears and face on each side. Taikru's face was deformed from pain and pleasure. Xenia grinned at the change in Taikru's facial expression and stuck out his tongue to lick. Taikru's sweaty cheeks for a long time. Don't hold back. Just let your voice out freely. Xenia whispered in a soft voice, but to Taikru those words were like a declaration of war. Right after that, Xenia started moving his lower body again. Xenia hugged Taikru's body tightly to keep him from falling and kept moving. When Xenia squeezed Taikru's trunk head, Taikru couldn't stand it and was shocked while letting out a small moaning sound. I told you not to hold it. Xenia said again, in a very soft tone. Taikru's body continues to lift up, then falls helplessly back down, his penetration getting stronger and deeper. Taikru had no choice but to hug Xenia and endure the terrible pleasure. Sandwich it between the wall and Xenia, there's nowhere for Taikru to escape. Xenia repeatedly pokes the same spot then presses down firmly. Not long after, Taikru let out a loud moan, a sound that had been suppressed that now completely exploded. Taikru's body suddenly shakes and writhes. A strong jet of thick liquid not only gushes onto Xenia's burly chest, but also hits Xenia's chin. Taikru's entire body shook violently. Then Taikru hugged Xenia tightly without moving. Xenia buried his face in Taikru's black hair, then carried Taikru on his chest. Heading to the master bedroom, Xenia's stiff shaft is still stuck inside Taikru's hole. Even as Xenia walks, carrying Taikru, the small movements also stimulated Taikru's insides causing Taikru to squirm 
In the bedroom was a sizable and luxurious bed. Xenia lowered Taikru on the bed, without releasing his shaft. It exerted enormous pressure on her entire body. Even when Taikru was hit by a rock, it didn't feel so heavy. In the blink of an eye, Taikru's entire face turned red, but Xenia pretended not to see it. Then Xenia kissed Taikru on the lips without hesitation. When Taikru tried to protest, Xenia tilted his head and stuck his tongue into Taikru's half-closed mouth. The hot wet tongue rushes in and sucks Taikru's tongue. Meanwhile, Xenia as shaft that was still impaled in Taikru's hole began to move. Taikru closes his eyes tightly and murmurs with a sigh. How much longer? Xenia looked at Taikru's sweaty face. Then Taikru let out his voice in a pleading tone. Stop joking around and hurry up and finish. 